play. And so many of you in America don't know what that means, and I'll explain it in a moment. However, we are having one or two little technical difficulties with the sound once again. So I'm going to first of all say good morning to Gregor, who is standing to my right side, and then I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say good morning to Chris. And good if morning. she's all sort of broken up and wobbly and I can't hear, I'm going to use my iPhone as well as my iPad. <laughs> We've got to sort this out one way or another. I think I need just a whole new system. Uh, but anyway, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. And I can hear you reasonably well. I'm going to just turn the sound up here. There, say good morning to me. Good morning again. Oh! Let's cross our fingers. We're good. So our technical difficulties. Wait a minute. Hold on. Our our technical difficulties are over for now. Keep our fingers crossed. All right. So so uh, Chris, did you have a good Christmas? I had a wonderful Christmas. It was very quiet, but still made the best of it. Well, you know, we're still. We're still at, in Christmas. Uh, we, <laughs> we in England, we don't celebrate just the day. I can remember the fir very first time that I uh, uh, had a Christmas at my house in America. And um, uh, we had Christmas Day, which was lovely. And then everybody around me got up and went to work or went off to do various things. And I'm looking, thinking, what's happening? Where is everybody going? And I was told, oh, no, we, we're back to work. We're off back to work. And I said, no, but it's Christmas. It's still Christmas. So in England, we celebrate Christmas Day. We celebrate, well, we celebrate Christmas Eve. We celebrate Christmas Day. Then if we're really lucky and we have a nice box, we have the whole week off. And we celebrate uh, New Year and New Year's Day also. Just imagine, Chris. Can you imagine your bosses doing that for you? I think the world over that would make big changes. Wouldn't it? But we, you know, we just think uh, Christmas is a time of real celebration and it's also family time. Now, I know in the, in the United States you have um, uh, Thanksgiving and so you take that time at Thanksgiving to do the family thing. But in England we don't have Thanksgiving. So our family time and our get-togethers and, and, of course, uh, if you are, as I am, if you celebrate Christmas because you are a Christian or because you leave in, believe in uh, Christ and you're celebrating the birth of Christ, as, as I try to do, uh, then, um, you know, we want to have a good, long celebration and one day does not do it, especially for all of you women out there and some men let's not forget the men who cook and who do all of that stuff too but for all of you out there who do all of the preparations and you do the cooking you do the the entertaining boxing day is that day of let's see it's a day of leftovers <laughs> it's a day of eating up all those delicious leftovers from the day before it's a day of uh, hanging out watching tv um, very often, uh, and again, I'm only speaking of England, I don't know about the States or any other country, but we have a day of races, it's a, you could be a day at the races, and um, uh, we always used to go on a, on a boxing day morning, we'd often go to the, to the races in the morning, and talking about horse racing now, we'd go horse racing, take a picnic, go back, have some hot chocolate, and then uh, just, and then just keep eating. Uh, we also used to have, and I've always had, and I think this might be the first year uh, since I've been an adult and had my and had my own house and my own family. This is the first year that we have not had a Boxing Day party. A uh, Boxing Day party is a day when I used to get a big ham and cook it, and um, none of that spiral ham stuff that you get now, which is actually so convenient and so delicious. But I used to get a big ham and roast it, and uh, we just have another big uh, feast day. And everybody, friends, family, strangers, neighbors, didn't matter who it was, we'd have people off the street. 
uh, would come on our Boxing Day and it would start somewhere in the sort of the sort of around the three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And then, um, you know, people would say, oh, I can't eat anything. I, I ate so much yesterday. I'm not eating anything today. But by the time the ham was cooked and the smells were coming through the kitchen and by the time the table was laden with all sorts of foods, lots of leftovers, but also lots of new stuff as well. And it was amazing that by about seven or eight o'clock in the evening, every, everybody was ready to start all over again. And of course, Boxing Day is the day of the trifle. Have you had my trifle, Chris? Your trifle is beyond delicious. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <coughs> and so... Uh, so this is uh, where we come into our story time today and um, I decided that I'm not going to tell a spooky story and I'm not going to tell a story of, of uh, you know, sort of different people's happenings because it's Christmas, because it's family time um, and also because of something I heard with, with uh, Rhys because he's doing his uh, online schooling and I was listening this last week, I was sitting in on his school time and um, the teacher was asking them, what are your family traditions? And, uh, um, you know, we all have our traditions. We all have those, you know, the things that we do, uh, some of us, uh, which I always used to do also. We'd go to a carol service on Christmas Eve. Uh, we'd have the midnight mass. We'd light the candles and sing Christmas carols. It was a beautiful and a magical thing to do because of COVID this year we didn't do anything like that but um, so we had that tradition of going to to church and singing and singing hymns and carols and I you all know I love to sing I love to sing my Christmas carols um, and um, what else did we do we always on Christmas morning and I'm talking about my house now but we had traditions uh, when i was growing up also but in my house uh, you'll think this is very weird but christmas morning was so exciting and opening gifts and so on and so forth and also the preparation for people coming um so there wasn't time for a big breakfast i know a lot of people have big breakfasts on christmas morning but we used to have um, mince pies and a glass of sherry that was another tradition that i started and uh, so we didn't do that this year either because we didn't get any mince pies. Oh, my goodness. I didn't make any mince pies. But uh, this, I think that's the first as well. Um, and so I thought that I would begin by talking about uh, traditions. Uh, the first time I started my Boxing Day tradition, I thought I'd tell you a little story about that. And then... What I would really love from all of you, and I know you're all dying to have questions and so on, but I would really like to hear from you if you have any unusual or different or special traditions that you keep up. Those traditions might have come from your great, 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 great grandparents, or they might have come just from you. And I think that every everyone should uh, strive to create a tradition of their own for their own young family which then goes into another tradition and so on and so forth so so that we as we always do once upon a time we as all good stories must begin once upon a time um, I was a young woman yes I once was a young woman and uh, I had my daughter Samantha who was just a probably a little girl she might have been about three or four years old so she was of an age where she knew she recognized you know what was going on she knew about Christmas she knew, she knew about Santa Claus she knew all of that stuff and I'm a, a great believer in uh, keeping the magic going with our children and our grandchildren for as long as we possibly can so my daughter knew that there were fairies around she knew that there were elves who came in and out she knew that uh, that santa claus had his elves in his in his uh, workshop and so on she, she knew all of those things but it always seemed to me sort of the first couple of years that, the, that she was born it seemed to me that there was a lot of excitement on christmas day a lot of excitement going on with the gifts and and all the rest of it 
and Boxing Day could fall a little bit flat. So I began a tradition. Uh, I began a tradition of keeping one gift back. And it started, when I first started it, it was about keeping one gift back for Samantha for Boxing Day. But somehow that tradition snowballed. So basically, this is my tradition. Um, the tradition that I began when my daughter was a little girl. Anyone who stays over and is present in the house on Christmas morning and who sits down to whatever it is, whether it's a cooked breakfast or whether it's mince pies and sherry, whatever that is, on, Christmas, on Boxing Day morning, everyone who's in the house gets a gift on Boxing Day. Now, you might think, that I've got more money than sense, but please understand when I'm saying a gift. It could be a little packet of M&Ms, it could be a little packet of chocolate buttons, it could be anything at all. It could simply be a nice uh, letter saying how much we value them being there. It could be the simplest of gifts, not costing a penny, but just a uh, um, explaining to my guests on Boxing Day morning just how much and how grateful we were that they were there with us and sharing Boxing Day with us. So everyone in our house who stays overnight uh, gets a Boxing Day gift and I got my Boxing Day gift this morning because my daughter has carried on the tradition with her grandson, with her son, my grandson, and I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure that he'll keep it up, that he, when he gets older with his family, he'll continue that Boxing Day tradition. So my Boxing Day gift this morning was an, a lovely nightdress. Um, my daughter's Boxing Day gift this morning was a pair of diamond earrings. They must have come from the Elf's Workshop because we can't figure out, <laughs> my grandson can't figure out well, he can really because we went shopping together <laughs> a few days ago, he and I. And uh, my grandson got an Osmo drawing kit. And if you don't know what that is, it's too difficult to explain. It wasn't particularly expensive. But, you know, the Boxing Day gifts come from each member of our family. They know. Reese knows that his gift was from his mummy and me. Uh, Samantha knows that her gift was from Reese and from me and I know that my nighty was from Samantha and Reese. so it's a very strong tradition and as I said it really can be the simplest of things it can be maybe some homemade cookies or it could be a, a nice letter it could be just as a special treat and it means that we sort of can keep that feeling of giving going not just on Christmas Day okay and wrap the door yeah this is very nice thank you very much and, all, and moving on it's a keeping up of the gift of giving in whatever form you would like to give so if you would like to continue with my family tradition there you have it it's a very simple thing and I would love to know if you all have your own family traditions or even if you have family traditions that are so old you can't even remember where they came from. So um, I think that's the end of my story, right? Chris, what do you think to the story today? I know it's not the usual story, but what do you think to this story? Well, I have to tell you, I come from a very large family. And once we all grew up and moved away, um, I would say some of the traditions have been lost. But what I did do this year was um sent out a text to all my siblings and said hey does anybody have mom's gumdrop cookie recipe yeah. and between us all we managed to find it in her handwriting oh wow and i made the cookies that she used to make for us when we were growing up so I felt that connection and the rest of the siblings, we all have the same recipe now. And so is, then, that going to, is that going to be now a family tradition? I think so, because I, I have, I tend to be the person who does the traveling on the holidays. And this year, of course, due to COVID, we did not. 
And I had just a wonderful time in the kitchen making all kinds of uh, cookies that she used to make us. And then we played uh, Santa's helper on New Year's Eve and we went to deliver it to people's homes around here that, um, you know, maybe don't have anybody else visiting them or whatever. And it was just fun to play Santa Claus on that. So um, that was my sort of new or expanded tradition this year. Good, and you're going to keep it up then. I think so because I find more. Well, if, if you don't keep it up, if you don't, if you don't keep it up, it doesn't count as a tradition, Chris. <laughs> it's, it's a, if it's a tradition, it's something that you do every year or whatever. So you know, so got to keep it up. Do we have anyone out there who'd also like to share a tradition or a Christmas uh, story with us? Well, Judith says, Mother always put Andy's mints in my stocking, but I was an adult when she started that. Plus, oh. I always got a tiny box of four covered chocolate cherries. Sweet oh. little memories. Oh, yes. Yes, but Judith, are you keeping up the tradition? Because if you allow a tradition to lapse, it's no longer a tradition. It used to be, but isn't now. So I'm interested in all of you out there who would, I mean, perhaps you've never thought about starting your own tradition. Perhaps you've never, it's never crossed your mind. But we can actually start things ourselves that we can then pass on, as I did with Boxing Day, to my uh, to my daughter and also to my now to my grandson and uh, it's just a thing that we don't even think about doing it's something that we simply do so uh, anybody out there who's got uh, you know a, a great story or a great tradition or somebody who's never thought about starting their own tradition but now he's thinking about it. You know, come on, what do you think? What's going on in your heads? Let's hear from you all. Well, Maggie says, I play Christmas music like Andrea Bocelli, Mahalia Jackson, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and more current music. That's her tradition. Okay, all right. <laughs> Anyone else out there, Chris? Um, not so much on the traditions, Rosemary. All right, so I don't know if you can hear in the background, but I am with my daughter and with my grandson, and uh, it's it's uh, you just I'm afraid have to put up with it. Can can you hear all the chitter chatter out there, Chris? Just a little bit. <laughs> all right, well, um, all right, well, let's start with some of the questions. But it's Christmas, so I'm looking for Christmas stuff. I'm looking for joy. I'm looking for fun. I'm looking for things that inspire us. So let's go. Well, you have, you know, just so, so many good mornings and Feliz Navidad's um, Merry Christmas. Everyone's wishing you, you know, the happy holidays. Thank you. And, and we hope you all got our messages because we send out all sorts of wishes, angel wishes, so on and so forth. For those of you who want to know, I did decorate the cake with my grandson. We do have it on uh, camera. We will be putting it up. But um, hey, so let's answer a couple of questions, and then I'm going to I'm going to tell you about my day yesterday. And if you don't want to tell me about your Christmas, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you about mine. So well, right. that's good that you answered the cake question because Michael was asking how did the cake turn out. Well, usually we cut the cake either on Christmas night um, or we cut it, we, or we wait and we keep it for the for the Boxing Day party. But as we didn't have a Boxing Day party and as we did have guests here, we put the cake out and a few people wanted to try it. So I had my first piece of Christmas cake yesterday. Uh, I might have another piece for lunch. That's how good it is. It's it's it it's good. It's a great Christmas cake. Yeah, it's a really good Christmas cake. And uh, I know that one or two of you out there actually took the recipe and baked your own. And I'm dying to see how they turned out. Okay. All right. So um, 
Nadia starts off with, Rosemary, I lost my mom a little less than two months ago. I'm in a lot of pain. And do you have a message for me? Well, Nadia, um, I know I'm sort of, con I'm pretty safe in saying that your mother is safe. Greg is putting his hand on my shoulder. So I know that I'm pretty sure that your mother is safe, that she's, uh, that she's doing well as with you. But Nadia, you, you know, this it's, it's so awful and it, you know, Death is not a punishment. I always say that to people. Death is something that is beautiful and wonderful and incredible. But to those of us who are left behind, it really does feel like a punishment. But Nadia, if you can think of it this way, you know, when we pass from this earth, the journey is so exciting and so wonderful. Now, if our loved ones were going on a journey, uh, it, it, you know, they planned a, a huge vacation or something. We'd be excited for them. Of course, we would know that they were coming back, wouldn't we? So we'd be excited for them. We'd be joyful for them. And we'd hope and wish that they were having a good time. And I want you to think of this as a sort of like a vacation for your mother, although you know she's not coming back in a physical sense, Nadia, but she is back and she is with you. So please try to hold on to that and hold on to the joy that she has and that she is feeling being where she is now, which Gregor tells me is truly and purely in the light. Okay, Chris. Maggie has a question uh, that she thinks maybe you haven't heard before. Okay. Are there any other beings on earth other than human and animal? If yes, do they interact with humans or animals or watch the nonsense um well yes uh, uh maggie i'm surprised you are you're asking me this question uh we did have our angel seminar last saturday gosh is it over a week chris that uh, <laughs> or a week that we did that yeah it was such a an amazing and uh, uh quite a, a stunning event and in during that event, uh, as we heard from Grey Eagle, we also heard very much from our angels. So we actually got to speak to and we actually got to hear from an earth angel. So you asked if there are any other beings other than human. Yes, our angels do walk amongst us. We, we learned that last Saturday. Uh, for those of you who didn't know that before, we learned that last Saturday. I've always known that since I've known about angels. So we have our angels who walk amongst us. We have our family in the spirit world who walk amongst us. Uh, there are many, many times when those in the spirit world who we love will come and stand next to us. And, and um, if, you've, if you ever doubt it, you should watch my... Um, Rosemary Altea in the kitchen because as I'm in the kitchen I'm often talking to my father who's standing next to me uh, he's the one who will tell me uh, that you need a bit more salt in that or uh, you know yeah maybe you know maybe cook it for five minutes longer um, I had that same experience yesterday I'm going to tell you about that in a few minutes too so you know um, you've got to uh, you know, you've got to listen for them, you've got to watch for them, you've got to be quiet, you've got to be patient and understand that they are with you. And as, as you understand that, then, you know, so many joyful things occur. Yes, Chris. Mona's saying, I'm just stopping by to say hello, and you're on my mind quite often. Oh. Wishing you both the best of health and happiness during the holiday season and always. Peace and blessings. Oh, Mona, thank you so much. And the right back at you the same to you thank you very very much for that judith's yes. tradition is uh her mother made a trifle oh yeah she's just letting you know about well, that yes but jean do you continue the tradition this is and if not why not all right and then um pillar 47 potty uh, says, what do you think of instrumental trans communication? Well, um, <laughs> I have lots of thoughts, but not for today. But thank you for the question. 
Well, if we only had time to answer all of that and in detail, that would be great, but we don't. So, Chris, keep going. Uh, Valeria. Rosemary, last night I had a dream about a boy who was very important to me and died three years ago. And I felt I really met him again. Can you tell me if it was a real meeting or just a dream? Well, I, it would be so easy for me to say, oh, no, it was real. It was real. But I am asking Gregor just to make sure because uh, I don't want to steer you you wrong because sometimes a dream simply is just a dream you know but apparently Gregor tells me that he was visiting with you I mean after all it is Christmas and when is a better time to visit our loved ones than at Christmas time so sure it is real it was real how lovely for you that's so nice for you it occurs to me as I'm talking to you or I'm listening if I wanted to, to talk more about traditions and my own traditions, I would say, well, my tradition is I make a Christmas cake every year. But that's something that we in England used to do. I don't know if we still do, but we used to do. It was never a Christmas unless you had a Christmas cake on the table. It was never Christmas if you didn't have a trifle on the table. And lots of people make all sorts of different kinds of trifle. I make a trifle which is uh, from, uh, from, of course, I tweaked it and made it my own, but it's from an old uh, traditional Victorian recipe, as my Christmas cake is also from an old Victorian uh, recipe. Um, I don't put any jelly, or as the Americans would say, jello, in my trifle, but I know that lots of people, if you don't have jelly in your trifle, it's not a trifle. So everybody has their own way of making things. And of course, also, if you really want to deal with traditions, the turkey is also having a turkey at Christmas. It makes me smile while I'm in America. There are so many Americans who think that, um, that and this is, this is really true, and I've met so many people who think, oh, you know, they tell me, uh, well, we're having a roast beef on Christmas Day, just like you English do. Actually, we don't. So let's dispel that myth. Uh, we have roast beef, roast pork, roast chicken. We have those things every Sunday. Most people used to. Again, the, the old ways are gone, but that's what we always used to do. Um, Chris, turkey is the turkey or goose is the, is the uh, Chris, traditional Christmas fare. On Christmas Day, we have a turkey. Um, we just had a turkey, what is it, three, six weeks ago or something for Thanksgiving. Uh, so um, you, Americans can be forgiven for thinking, you know, you have your turkey on Thanksgiving and on Christmas you have something else. But it is not a British tradition to have roast beef on a, on a Christmas day. It is tradition to have roast beef on a Sunday, most Sundays for some people. But the tradition is truly uh, a turkey or a nice big fat goose on Christmas Day and that's what we do that's how we celebrate our Christmas days but we've got all these traditions but what I was after was uh, a tradition that maybe you've either continued that your mother grandmother so on used to do but that you've continued or have you made your own tradition what is your own tradition that is simply yours or simply a, a, an unusual or a different tradition but it, but it is part of the family. Maggie, I play music all the time and I play the music a lot often, I play the music that you mentioned. Um, is, it oops, is it a tradition, I'm sorry I'm sort of knocking things over here, let me just move this around. Uh, is it a tradition? Well it's something that we love to do, it's a tradition to have the Christmas cake and the turkey and all that stuff, it's a typical uh, thing that the British do, but is it your own, did you make it your own? And that, So I'm looking for that one thing that you made your own or that one thing that your great grandmother, your grandmother, your mother and now you do, so come on, you know, let's, be, let's be creative, can we be creative? So while you're thinking on that, I'm going to tell you about my day yesterday, which was, well, actually the last two or three days because I've been cooking for the last 
two or three days and we had um, a, a few people over for Christmas um, and we were very careful just just to make it clear uh, we're very aware of COVID but we did have a few people over for Christmas and um, uh, we had the traditional Christmas uh, dinner which is turkey we did have the turkey in the end we had turkey um, I made pigs in blankets what are pigs in blankets I hear some of you say so I, I, I was able to get some English sausage which is the best sage sausage which is the best uh, wrapped in bacon yes think about all of that what that does to your heart but actually the way that you cook it gets rid of the majority of the fat and you just eat then the the, the meaty stuff but they are delicious so we had those we had roast potatoes we had mashed potatoes we had roasted brussels sprouts with uh, what did i put in there a little curry powder and uh, some um, salt and uh, uh, some not onions but shall shallots or as american was americans would say shallots so uh and what else did we have we had uh, roasted parsnips and carrots always do that and is your mouth watering chris <laughs> <laughs> oh i've been at your table before so i can picture this i can uh, actually and smell it we had of course stuffing and cranberry sauce and a mm. delicious gravy and i probably missed out a couple of things that we had on the table and the table is laden really uh, it's an awful lot of hard work. My back this morning, I could not move for a couple of hours this morning when I first got up um, because I was literally cooking all day in and out and in and out. And luckily, Samantha's kitchen is very small. New York apartments have small kitchens generally. Uh, so my neighbor who was also coming for Christmas, Samantha's neighbor, uh, allowed me to use his kitchen. So I had two ovens going, which was actually great but it was a feat even so because his kitchen is very small also it was a, it was a feat to produce that food hot without being overcooked burned and so on and um, here is a tradition uh, that i keep up that was my father's but it, it's sort of it's a it's a cooking tip really more than a tradition but whenever i'm cooking a turkey I always remember many, many years ago, I was in my 20s and and uh, for Christmas, I'd had uh, a tape recorder. It was one of the, it shows you how old I am. So one of the new tape recorders. And so uh, we went to my father's house, my parents' house on Boxing Day. And we had, of course, the traditional leftovers, which was all that stuff that I just told you. And it was all cold. It was delicious. And... Um, so I hidden the tape recorder and pressed play and I wanted to get my father on a recording so I'm thinking what can I get him to talk about so I actually knew immediately I said to him dad daddy how do you how do you get the the turkey to be to taste so good and so moist and of course I knew he was on a roll and he told me how to, to make sure never overcook a turkey it only requires 15 minutes a pound yes and i've had arguments from people from all over the world that you can't just cook a turkey for 15 minutes a pound but you can anything any bird that's over sort of six or seven pounds if you cook it for longer than 15 minutes a pound is going to end up really really dry so we had lots of compliments on my turkey yesterday but every time i cook a turkey i think about my daddy and i think about that conversation that we had and how he talked for about oh i'm going to say at least half an hour on how to prepare it what to do how to season it and to never cook it for more than 15 minutes per pound so if you had a dry turkey yesterday now you know the secret you know the secret never ever ever overcook a turkey and trust me it will be fully cooked so uh there you are <laughs> another little story another little tradition sort of i always cook the turkey the way my father taught me to cook the turkey right chris all right so i'm starting at the bottom of the list because that's <laughs> where all the traditions are here uh, okay okay so uh muriel says i love the magic of christmas so i love watching nice magic christmas movies each christmas 
I have to watch a Christmas movie to dream more. Oh, that's that's nice. I like that t- tradition. We always on uh, on uh, Christmas Eve, we have the elf on the shelf. And uh, the elf always leaves Reese a pair of pajamas and a book and a movie. And um, the, the elf always suggests the movie. And we watched on Christmas Eve. We always stay home with him and we always read the book and we always have a uh, sort of crackers and cheese and uh, what else did we have this this year we do we have like a little smorgasbord of things we don't actually have dinner because we know that we're going to be eating crazily the next day so we had cheese and we had uh, um, cornish pasties and we had bits of this and that and Reese had cheese and crackers and we watched a movie about a dragon so um that, so that we always do that too so i think it's a i think it's a great thing another great tradition which is what samantha started with her son so you know so every year every time you have a a, a, a new child or every time if you get married and you start your life when you have you know you have a husband or you have a partner and your first christmas you know start and build your own traditions yes chris keep going Marlene says, our family tradition is making our mom's stuffing recipe. My dad always had to taste it to make sure it was just right. <laughs> Yesterday, my daughter was making the stuffing for the first time in her own kitchen. Oh. She said she felt her grandpa standing beside her, letting her know when it was, when it was perfect. Oh, that's so nice. I love that. I love that. Keep going. Uh, Ambra says, my grandmother used to make a corn casserole. And I make it now for the holidays. Brilliant, brilliant. So keeping up traditions. I love this. I really love this. Chris, keep going. Karen says, uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. We had a tradition to have Christmas pudding that we used to light up and flame and then have a yummy sauce on it. Yes. I think only my aunt, my grandmother's daughter, has the recipe. You made me think I need to contact my aunt to get the recipe to continue the tradition. Oh, you must, you must. And if you can't find your aunt's uh, recipe for Christmas pudding, I have an amazing uh, recipe for Christmas pudding. It is so easy to make. Uh, it is really, really absolutely delicious. And of course, we always uh, put the we always light the pudding. You pour brandy or whatever it is, whiskey or something over the top. We always use brandy, uh, and and you light the flame and and bingo, off it goes. But we were not able to make it this year. Number one, the kitchen is too small. Number two, it's very hard to get ingredients here to make a decent Christmas pudding in the States. And I was supposed to go to England this year, but because of COVID didn't go. So, um, you know, so we we uh, actually did not do the, uh, the Christmas pudding, but we usually do the Christmas pudding. And don't forget of a traditional Christmas pudding, you must always put in sixpences or the closest I think we've got now to a sixpence is um, in America, you have a, little tiny 10 cent piece i think it's, ten, it's a 10 cent piece i don't know what you call it a dime uh, anyway we always put silver uh what what they used to do in victorian times is they used to put one silver piece in the pudding and then each person would get a piece of the pudding and everybody was searching for that who who would get the silver sixpence uh, in my house, the tradition was I used to buy a bunch of silver sixpences and then as I was serving up the pudding, I would magically slip a silver sixpence underneath the pudding. And you just have to make sure that your guests are aware <laughs> that, you know, eat it slowly now. There could be a sixpence in there. And you can have just a regular custard or you could have brandy brandy sauce or whiskey sauce or brandy butter, things like that on it. But yes, what a fabulous tradition that is. So keep it up. All right, Chris, keep going. Mark says, I had an amazing Christmas goose and today will be French meat pie, a tradition I make every year. Ooh. A tradition handed down from my grandmother and mom. Oh, we want that recipe. Can, are we allowed? You know, sometimes if it's a family recipe, it's a secret recipe. People don't give it out. But 
but Mark is <laughs> smiling at you. I'm always looking for new recipes, and that sounds delish. So uh, I'd love the recipe if you'd like to give it to me. Uh, but don't feel pressured, Mark. <laughs> well, you know, why shouldn't I make you feel a little bit pressured? A goose, you had a goose. How fantastic. I love goose. And, uh, you know, anyway, all right, keep going. Maggie says, I went against tradition and had ribs on Christmas. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good for you. Well, might, might that be the start of a new tradition, your tradition? It could be, Maggie. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Gloria says, a tradition that our mother started with us when we were young was Christmas baking. One of my siblings and I gathered to do lots of bakings to share with friends and family. Lots of cookies and biscotti from our Italian heritage and Scottish shortbreads. So much fun. Yes, yeah, Scottish shortbread. Can you believe, I'm going to tell you all something now, you'll be horrified. I have not made shortbread since I've been here. Dealing with Kachuro, dealing with Christmas, dealing with all sorts of other stuff going on. It's been very hard for me to do any actual uh, baking. But this next week, we're having a box. We're having a, uh, a, a New Year's Day open house get together. I'm sure there's going to be some shortbread on the table. And of course, it's always sh Scottish shortbread. I've got two delicious recipes for, for shortbread. I've got more than actually two or three. But anyway, uh, so we're making shortbread because it's Reese's favorite and we'll be making hobnobs because I've you know I, I've been talking about these hobnobs I have absolutely perfected this recipe uh, so we're going to have hot hobnobs and various other bits and pieces as well so keep up that tradition of baking Chris Judith says I belong to a private Facebook page where most of the people are from Great Britain everyone posted pictures of their Christmas cakes they were feeding all right. Well, um, hmm, well, we can, we can send you a picture of mine <laughs> if you'd like. Uh, mine is always a Christmas scene, and if you go on YouTube, you'll see last year and the year before. I'm not even sure if it's the year before, and we shall post this year's up. Um, each year, the Christmas cake is fairly is pretty much the same because I do the same one every year. Um, but Reese gets older and older, and uh, uh, and this year you'll see he's got no teeth. All his teeth at the front are gone. And, um, but we do have a, a wonderful uh, Christmas uh, uh, tradition of uh, him helping me to decorate the cake. And he always wants to put on the, the snowman and the penguin and uh, whatever else he can get his hands on. So ours always, because because it's what Reese wants, it, it always ends up being a Christmas scene. Uh, and, you know, the recipe is in my cookbook if you'd like to check that out or if you just write to us, we'll gladly send you the recipe. Chris. Cheryl's asking, how is your beautiful, sweet dog? My beautiful, sweet dog is up and down. He is eating uh, for the first time, uh, well, about three or four days ago, he was actually back on his regular kibble but in a in a whole different way i'm i'm feeding him ground beef and liver which he loves and uh, yesterday he had turkey uh, and um, so he's eating not nearly as much as he w used to but he is eating now twice a day uh he's um he's much better in one way but he is sleeping uh uh, so so much so much longer now but thank you very much for asking he doesn't seem to be in pain anymore he seems to be much more uh, alert in those moments when he is alert and as i've said he's actually back to eating which is a really good sign so thank you keep going chris albertine wants to know uh hello rosemary great Hi, eagle did you also get a gift from Grey Eagle from Santa? I always get a gift from Grey Eagle, but not from Santa, actually. But I always, I always, always get a gift from Grey Eagle. I think if any of you were at our workshop last Saturday, uh, I had 
one of the greatest gifts um, that uh, in that you could imagine anyone would have. And uh, well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you to to imagine. If you weren't there, it, I have to leave you to imagine what it might be. But it was really beautiful, Chris. What did you do? You, can you speak to last Saturday's um, some, uh, webinar? Chris, did I lose you? I think I've lost her. I might have lost all of you. Who knows? Let me see if I can. I'm going to phone her and see. I don't know if I've lost you or if uh, if. I don't know what's happened. Let's have a look and see. Uh, I could be talking to myself right now. Who knows who I could be talking to? Let's have a go at this. Let's see. So. And where are you? I see. Lost you again. Oh, there. Wait a minute. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I spoke too soon, didn't I? I said we don't seem to have any uh, any technical difficulties, and I can't even get her on my Facebook uh, for my FaceTime. Rosemary, I have you live. Pardon? I have you as live. Oh, Karen tells I've got a message from Karen who says you're still live. So, uh, Chris, you seem to be you seem to have disappeared here. So, so now you got, now you got funny that funny voice, voice again. again. Let me, Let get, me off get off of this and see, and see and if I can't, I can't hear you properly, I'll come back. back. So, are you there, Chris? I am here. Can you hear me? Oh, perfect. I'm not quite sure what happened. Uh, all right, let's I got a message just before it went off that one of the connections was um, going quirky. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I did speak too soon, didn't I, when I said uh, no technical difficulties. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's keep going, shall we? Yes. Um, Oh, goodness. Betta says, Dear lovely Rosemary, I wanted to thank you for all the times you told me something about my grandmother and also to tell you that I have read most of your books and that they have really helped me. Oh, Betta, that's so sweet. You see, I'm getting gifts all day long today. I think, Chris, before you we cut off, I asked you uh, um, if you had any comments or an opinion on our fantastic webinar last last. Saturday. Uh, so I'm going to ask you that again. Okay. Um, that seminar was so profound and so healing um, to hear the earth angel Tomas talk to Claudia and his uncle, um, to hear the messages directly from Gray Eagle through you. Um, it took me a while to sift through and honestly, I still sift through. So I believe that's what most of the comments said during the webinar that people were really feeling the powerful um, messages, I guess I would say. Um, and I'm hoping when we look back on it that I'll be able to take even more because when you're helping run a webinar, you don't get to be 100% involved in the message. But it was very touching, very, very touching. Well, I think we had more people crying than we, uh, en masse than we've had in a quite a while. <laughs> but they were good tears, let me just say. They were very, very good tears. And it was a very, very moving uh, webinar. So so I think that um, Albertine asked did did Greg give me a gift? And I'm fortunate because he gives me gifts every day. But here I am getting more and more gifts from all of you too. So I'm I'm sort of I'm 
I'm being gifted every every day with something which is why I think it's very important that when we get the opportunity that we can also gift give gifts ourselves and and again you don't have to have a lot of money to give a gift a kind word a smile uh, just a little note to you know maybe to your neighbor or to a friend you know is or by themselves is Christmas this sort of thing uh, lots of lots of ways that we can give without spending a single penny but it does require a little bit of time a little bit of thought and a little bit of energy also you know um, I did say that I was going to talk about my daddy in the kitchen and uh, yesterday of course I was uh, I was uh, at the neighbor's house just just uh, that we just have the same sort of joined hallway here and um, when you don't know your oven, when you don't know somebody else's oven, it's a bit tricky because just because the oven says, you know, 350, 400 doesn't mean it's going to get to that temperature. And every oven is different. So, you know, when you read recipes and you're sort of baking and you're do, or you're cooking and you're doing different things, you know, people say very often, I followed the recipe, but it wasn't nearly as good as I'd expected. Or you might go to a friend's house and have something and they give you the recipe and you take the recipe and it's not nearly the same. And and sometimes uh, it, it happens that it's because of the, the oven that you're using or that they use is different than the one you're using. So I do rely on my daddy and I do rely on Grey Eagle when I'm cooking. And so when I came to put the turkey in my neighbor's oven, uh, they're, they're sort of, they're, they're half ovens. It's not even a full oven, it's a half oven. And so you've got to imagine that the heat is more intense because it's more trapped and so on. And I'm thinking I better pay attention to the 15 minutes a pound rule here. And then I thought, but will it take a little bit longer because I don't know the oven? And so I had to rely on uh, Grey Eagle and on my daddy to say, okay, it's done now. So I'd sort of worked it out that it would be between three and four hours. And then I had to rely on, okay, take it out. And I have to say that when I took it out, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfectly cooked uh, turkey. Now, I'm afraid my, my iPad is running out of power. You won't believe it. I've just had a little notice. We've got a few more minutes, but Chris, we must be almost up for time anyway, right? Yes. Um, you're about three minutes up. So I know that I haven't as answered very many questions. I know you're all sort of you know, probably disappointed, but it's Christmas. And I gave up my Christmas Boxing Day morning to do this. And Chris gave up her Boxing Day morning to do this. And we know that all of you watching all gave up your Boxing Day morning to do this. I hope you've had as much fun doing it as we have had. It is Christmas, so I'm afraid it's going to be a short, quick... I've got to get back to my family. Uh, um, is there anything, Chris, that uh, you've noticed in the questions or anything that you'd like to add before my iPad actually cuts out on me? <laughs> and I think, Chris, have we lost you again? So there you are. It seems a perfect time. We've lost Chris. I don't know what's going on. Well, I do really. I think the spirit world is saying, all right, enough now. You've done enough. Go back to Reese. Go back to playing. Go back to we're going to be coloring this afternoon. You have lots of coloring stuff going on. So I do hope all of you out there had as wonderful a Christmas as I have had. I know that there are many of you who are alone. I know there are many of you listening who perhaps don't even celebrate Christmas. But whether you celebrate Christmas or not, celebrate something. Find something in your day. Find something in your life. Find something in your family. Find something in your own heart. Find something, please, to celebrate because life is so, so short. And we need to find joy wherever we can. So, um, until I see you again, we will be back next Saturday with our usual story time, with our proper story time, even though it will be, it'll be New Year's Eve, but that's all right. We'll be back with our usual story time. Uh, 
would be New Year's Eve or New Year's Day? I'm, I'm lost. I have no idea. Anyway, next Saturday, uh, uh, we'll be there. If you want to know more about me, please go to my website, rosemaryaltea.com, or one word, rosemaryaltea.com. You'll find me there. You'll find all sorts of stuff going on there. You'll find out how to join our next webinar. Uh, if you would like healing, it'll tell you how to go about doing that. In fact, it'll tell you everything you need to know. So I don't need to say any more to you, do I? Thank you so much, every one of you, for joining me. I didn't really think we'd have so many people because, after all, it is Christmas and we should be with our families at this time of year, right? Uh, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, it is a Saturday morning. So please go out, enjoy the rest of your day. And please, everyone out there, have a very, very blessed rest of the, of the weekend and have a very blessed rest of this year because we are closing in on this year. Uh, in a week's time, it will be two, 2021. How did it get to go so fast? So my love to all of you, my thanks to all of you, my appreciation to all of you. I'd like to say thank you to Chris, who always does a great job. And of course, I'd like to say thank you to Great Eagle, always here. And last but not least, thank you all of you for being so loyal, so fabulous, coming up with such good questions. Mark, I want the recipe that you talked about. Uh, until I see you again, we'll be back on Thursday morning, by the way, for our... Uh, the spirit world sees all and then again we'll be back next uh saturday for a spooky story maybe uh until then please all of you have a very very blessed rest of the day and have a wonderful week